Hello, beautiful soul. I'm Vicki Howie of ChakraBoosters.com, the creator of Chakra Boosters Healing Tattoos. And today, I'm going to share with you a very special list. A couple of my channel subscribers have asked me to tell you what my favorite spiritual books are. Now that's a tough question, right? Because it's like picking your favorite child. I've read a lot of books, but nevertheless, I've come up with my seven favorite spiritual books. These are the ones that I couldn't put down or I read several times or resonated with me most over the years. It doesn't mean they're the best for anyone else, but since you're in my tribe, perhaps you resonate with my teachings because you resonate with some of the things that I really love, which I can tell you is relationship-oriented stuff uh, mixed with spirituality, tantric stuff, meaning masculine and feminine orientation, orientation or stuff that just is more embodied, things that take responsibility for our reality and creating it and co-creating it, I should say, with the universe. We don't create it alone, but co-creating our reality and things that express God consciousness versus uh, rules about spirituality, more of a God consciousness that we all share. So that's the best way I can describe it. I have pretty eclectic likes, I would say, and I think my list is pretty eclectic, but it may have some books that are out of print. I didn't even check because I wanted to share from my heart. And sometimes if you search around or you ask somebody else, you may have a friend that has the book or you might be able to find a PDF of it somewhere. So I just wanted to share with you what my genuine favorite ones are. I'm sure my memories allowed me to lose one or two, so these are my favorite seven at this time, but they go all the way back to at least my teenage years. One of them goes way back to when I was a teenager. So what are my seven favorite spiritual books? And when I say spiritual, I mean transformational, but not rule-based transformational, transformational that is about spirit, transformational that is about us unfolding as a soul. My first favorite book is The Seven Ahas of Highly Enlightened Souls. I had to make sure I got that right. It wasn't just enlightened souls, it's highly enlightened souls. It's by Mike George, The Seven Ahas of Highly Enlightened Souls. It's quite a title, wouldn't you say? And it really lives up to it. The reason is it's a tiny little pocket book that you can keep women in your purse or men, maybe you carry uh, some kind of pouch or purse as well, but you can keep it with you really easily. It's very easy to read. I don't know how Mike does it, but he just sums everything up in such a great way. And of course, it's got my favorite number seven, the seven ahas. And it just feels like it's one of the most concise and deep books at the same time. So out of all these books, it is by far the smallest and the shortest, and yet it goes super duper deep. So that's number one, the seven ahas of highly enlightened souls. So grab it, because I know you're a highly enlightened soul. <laughs> In the making, if not feeling it right this moment. So you're just waiting to read and have those ahas. Number two, these aren't necessarily in order, right? This, this book is so near and dear to my heart. It's by Debbie Ford and it's called The Dark Side of the Light Chasers. And I'm gonna read the subtitle because it's long. Reclaiming Your Power, Creativity, Brilliance, and Dreams. The key here is the dark side of the light chasers. <laughs> now that's a mouthful of a title, but this was Debbie Ford's first book about shadow and she was such a pioneer for me of embodied shadow work, which I love, love, love. I think it's the one area and let me just finish that. I think it's the one area that we are missing so often in the spiritual transformational world right now. Shadow is the cornerstone of embodiment. If we are God and we have all qualities as slices of the divine, we have everything in us, then if we walk around trying to be 
certain things, light things, but not dark things, or if we put ourselves down and we grew up in an environment where we can't embrace the light in us and the, the good qualities, either side, if we don't embrace, we're not walking around in our wholeness, which means we're blocking certain chakras. We're not walking around in all of us. When we unblock all of our chakras and we are all that we came into this world, like when we're a little baby, then we are simply whole right? We're whole. So shadow work is a beautiful way to get back to wholeness. And Debbie Ford's book, this is her first. She follows it by several other books, but this is my favorite because it's the deepest. And for me, it's kind of the intro book, but a deep intro book. Whereas the following books for me just didn't resonate quite as deeply. This one was the one that I just fell in love with. I still recommend it to friends. I still have dog-eared copies of it. <laughs> so if you're interested in shadow work, Debbie Ford's book, The Dark Side of the Light Chasers, will be yummy for you. Number three, Conversations with God. There's a good likelihood you've read this one already because it's huge. Many of the books I mention are little books. Like, I don't think that many people have found The Seven Ahas. And many people probably know about Debbie Ford, but haven't read her earliest book, The Dark Side of the Light Chasers, which is my favorite. But Conversations with God is huge and has had many sequels, so to speak, many versions of it, and it's been translated into so many languages, but I could not leave it out because I remember the first time I picked it up, it was so wonderful to hear and, and, and just feel the way that Neil Donald Walsh had this relationship, this conversation with God. It was so loving. And that loving energy is what's true for me in God energy, whether that God energy is within another human being or coming directly from the ethers, from the divine. And often I grew up and I heard a, a vengeant God or a judgmental God, or you need to do this or that, or, you know, there's just a lot of judgment, a lot of categories, a lot of, even when I was around Christianity, where there was a lot of love and where I could relate to the beautiful heart of Jesus, I still was faced with a lot of, well, are you saved? Jesus is the only way. A lot of pri proprietary, this is the only way stuff. And I have a really open belief that we all are divine and that we all can find that divinity and express it here and that we're all in bliss consciousness when we leave here, that we're in another realm where we are just consciousness. So those kinds of categories and judgments don't ring true for me. So I absolutely adored the playful, friendly, loving voice of God that comes through Neil Donald Walsh's book, Conversations with God. So if you haven't read any, read the first one first and then go through the progression of the different books. And the advantage is, if you're watching me from another country, his books are translated into so many languages. One of the things that makes conversations with God special to me and Neil Donald Walsh's whole experience around hearing God talk to him is that his experience completely fits into my chakra life cycles. Now, if you're not familiar with my chakra life cycles, I downloaded them right at the end of the Mayan calendar, right before, it was like end of October, 2012. So it was right there, right? Just a month or two before. And right when I was at the finishing up my seven, seven chakra life cycle, which means that's when the veil is the thinnest. I was seven, seven, crown, crown. I was as close as I was ever going to be to the divine. And just suddenly the chakra life cycles just downloaded for me. And after I downloaded them, I was like, wow, that is so elegant, so amazing. These energies that run our whole life and shape our whole life. And I wrote a book called Your Roadmap to Life Mastery. Discover the seven year cycles that shape your life. But because my previous book was completely owned by a publisher and I'm not really involved in it anymore, I wanted to keep this one as my baby. So you can only find that book in my store and I highly recommend going and getting it. And you'll get to read in my chapter on the 50th year when we have our big reset at our 50th year, well, several spiritual luminaries had that reset and Neil Donald Walsh did. And 
he was actually my test because when I got the download of the chakra life cycles, when I was 49 in my seven, seven chakra life cycle, I said, wow, that makes sense that I would get this download of this information that would tell me that I would get this download at 49, the end of my 49th year. And especially right before the end of the Mayan calendar as well in 2012. So I said to myself, well, if that's true, then there should be somebody else who has downloaded great information from God at that age as well. And immediately I thought about Neil Donald Walsh. And so he was the big test for me. Like when did he download conversations with God? So I went and researched it. And of course he downloaded it at 49.50, right at that crossover point. And I actually um, quote him in an interview along uh, pretty long, a few pages of this quote of this conversation, I should say that he had with uh, Larry King about this and talking about the death of his old way and the birth of the new and how this was happening at his 49 50th crossover so if you want to see that go get my book roadmap to find out about neil donald walsh's download of conversations with god but i also recommend his series of course the conversation conversations with god series number four this is a relationship book, but it is a deep, beautiful, um, symbolic, uh, shadow oriented. It's not your typical how to do this, do that. It's deep healing, using your relationship for deep healing. And it is Love and Awakening, Discover the Sacred Path of Intimate Relationship by John Wellwood. I have a lot of relationship books I like. I think a lot of people have something to say about this topic, but in the age we're in where relationships can't help but be a path to the sacred in, these, in this feminine era now, I think his book is amazing. And he gives so many real examples of couples and he has the actual dialogues in there. And you can see how they're triggering each other and offering an opportunity for each other to heal deep at deep, deep levels. So that's when you're with a soulmate, you know it because it's either it can be really challenging and triggering and then there's healing or challenging and triggering and then there's projection and fighting and moving apart and it just doesn't work. So this book gives you a lot of ahas, gave me, I should say, a lot of ahas about how shadow works in relationship and how we can use our relationships, or I shouldn't say use them, but I mean, I guess that's probably true, but how we can approach our relationships to get our most spiritual growth out of them. Because we're in a reflective world, we're in a very feminine world right now, and I don't believe we're we are no longer, in my opinion, just my opinion, in the age of the masculine, uh, meditate in a cave, it's all about you, you got to find your own way. I believe we are in a collective cycle now and the intimate relationships are the most direct reflection of our triggers, our spots that need to be healed. And so if our partner's aware of that and we're aware of that and we're willing to work together out of a deep desire to grow and a deep desire to play together and, and a, a willingness to be courageous and vulnerable and communicative and honest, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, um, more growth can come in relationship than anywhere else. Because you're still working with it yourself, but you have a reflective mirror, a partner that you probably chose for that very reason. So I absolutely love that book. And it's funny, I made it number four. The heart chakra, ding. <laughs> Number five is my book that goes back the farthest. It's called The Nature of Personal Reality. It's written by Jane Roberts, who was a channel in the 70s, I believe, and she channeled an entity called Seth. Now, if channeled books are too much for you, I understand. I don't follow very many channels. I have a few that I like, but probably only really two that I've ever followed. And Seth is and always will be my favorite. There's just something so true in what Seth says to me. So Seth, I think, I don't know exactly because I was so young when I really got into Seth. I don't know exactly 
who or what Seth is, <laughs> but I know that I learned a lot about how I co-create my reality from this book. If I had to pick one book out of all the books I've ever read, that is my Bible. It's like the way I see the world spiritually and I can go back to it and it's like the foundational thing that I believe. Nothing's completely, I would have to write my own book to get my true beliefs, but this one is the closest. And I read it as a teen and I read it again at least one more time in my life. I'm not a big one for reading books over and over again, but I really, really enjoy this one. It is ideas and it is somewhat philosophical. So you need to be interested in that kind of stuff. It's different a bit from the last book I just said, because the last book is very much, here's these couples, here's what it looks like. Uh, there's, it's very, very tangible. Although when I think about it, I think the nature of personal reality, I think Seth via Jane Roberts, the channel, is very good at giving real examples as well. So that's my oldest, longest love, that book. Okay, and just talking about it's making me go, hmm, it's time for me to go back and read it again. Okay, number six is The Dragon Doesn't Live Here Anymore by Alan Cohen. Now really, for me, Alan Cohen's such a great writer, so entertaining, so funny. His books read so fast and he's a deep man with just a really beautiful heart that I could probably say other books of his here, so you can look up Alan Cohen and just about go with any book of his. But I chose this one because it stuck with me as just going so fast and being so entertaining, lively, and empowering. And I want to be about empowering you on this channel. So there is a tendency for us to have self-judgment and to sabotage ourselves in different ways. And The Dragon Doesn't Live Here Anymore is all about not just self-love, but tangible ways to change your relationship with yourself. And from what I got from Alan, he didn't seem to have a real bad one to start with. He seemed to have a pretty loving situation. So this isn't, uh, this, this isn't super informative on really intense trauma or really dysfunctional background, but you can still apply the concepts. He always gives you such great illustrations and he's very transparent. He uses examples from his own life over and over and over again which I just really relate to and love so much. And I'm trying to do it more myself. Being more of an upper chakra gal, that's a little harder because it's you need to be really embodied to bring up your own stories, remember your own stories. I'm, I'm sure I have so many I don't even remember that I could use that I don't use. So Alan's very personal, he's very positive, he's very funny, entertaining, he's a great writer. Check out The Dragon Doesn't Live Here Anymore or any other of Alan Cohen's books. Finally, number seven. All the books I've said so far are pretty much non fiction how to's. This next book is non fiction philosophical biography of a slice of life and it's called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. It's pretty famous. It was written in 1946 so you've probably heard of it. If you haven't, I'm giving you a gem. This book has no how-to's in it. It's not guiding you like a teacher. Instead, Viktor Frankl is telling you about how he spiritually survived living in a Nazi camp during World War II and watching his Jewish beloveds, his friends and family being killed and tortured around him and how he kept the flame of his own belief in himself and humanity alive within him. And I'm getting chills and I'm about to cry just talking about it. Here we go guys, this is the empathic part of me. This is a collective wound. This is a huge collective wound. So if you have not read this book, this is a book every human being on this planet right now needs to read. And it will hit you in deeper ways and teach you more than almost any how-to book or you know, any book written at a lighter level could 
Will ever has. Wow, that just surprised me, guys. I just got hit by a wave of collective grief. I'm still getting hit by it. <laughs> this is what it's like to be an empath. Those of you that are, you probably really understand. Those of you that aren't, I'm glad you're seeing it. So that's it. Those are my seven books. Those are my seven. I have an honorable mention to a book called Thank You for Leaving Me from a dear friend of mine, a dear friend of mine, Farhana Dalla wrote it about her divorce process and it's so honest, so transparent, so beautiful. And I've read it more than once and each time I read it, which is unusual again for me to read a book more than once, it comes off this is a little like Eckhart Tolle's The Power of Now, which I also like, which Eckhart Tolle hovers between classical thinking and sort of tantric thinking, uh, non-dual. Dualist thinking, body, spirit, and non-dual. Body and spirit are one. Everything is one. He kind of bounces back and forth, so that's why it, he almost feels contradictory to me at times. I can find all kinds of places, but for that reason, he also synthesizes. But his book tends to change as to when I read it. The Power of Now seems to actually change in the now. I don't know how to explain it any other way than each now that I read his book or pick up a chapter it's read differently. It comes off differently to me. This is the same way I feel about Farhana's book, Thank You for Leaving Me. I've read it maybe three times and each time it's come off differently. It like it crosses across time and changes with me, with you. I don't know that it's available at all. Um, Farhana's not writing right at this moment. I really don't know if it's available. Perhaps I could get Farhana to let me sell a download of it on my store and just saying that gave me a good idea to do that. So let me know if that's something interest, that you're interested in if you can't find it, but maybe it's out there as well too. I'm just not sure if it's still in publication. It's a phenomenal book. The other uh, two honorable men mentions for me definitely go to Wayne Dyer because you could read absolutely anything of his and it's stellar gold awesome. I couldn't even pick one of his to put on the list. And then any book also by Byron Katie. But I do want to say with Byron Katie that she's got a ton of videos where she's working with people, ton of videos on YouTube. Videos she's put out, videos other people have put out, and she's got a, a website, thework.com. And it, the work is such a beautiful thing. It's a very gentle way to work with your shadow, a very gentle way to work with your beliefs and your thoughts that are limiting you and making you unhappy, creating suffering. So you could read any one of her books and they'll be good. But also I just recommend go to YouTube and watch any video by Katie. Just look at the titles and whatever draws you go to that because she has so much embodied feminine knowledge to share. And I don't mean feminine woman. I mean, there's just such a heart at what she does. It's mother love. It's unconditional. And I was at one of her live events and I could just so feel her heart energy. I could so feel who she really is. Another person that I love is Matt Kahn. And truthfully though, Matt Kahn for me, it's, it's not that he's, his books aren't good, they are good, but none of his books would make the list for me. The books for Matt Kahn don't do it for me. His live, I believe he is the most amazing live speaker right now. He's speaking in his own voice, from his own experience, in very entertaining, deep, funny ways, but he's speaking to this divine feminine era and he's speaking to and for the collective and healing us as he speaks. So as long as I'm giving you some resources, I have to put Matt Kahn on there. You can look him up on YouTube. If you're in my tribe, I'd love to have you be in his tribe because Matt is amazing. And people love his books too. So <laughs> everyone's different. I just would rather spend my time personally with Matt because he's so, so entertaining live or on video. So that's my list guys. And I'm loving you so much from over here. Thank you for asking me to share it. And feel free in the comment section here to say your favorite book so our whole tribe can really begin to learn from each other's favorites and maybe give a few words about why it's your favorite, what it's about, or you know how it affected you, how it changed your life. Okay? And I will see you on the next video. Much love.